Hi everyone, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm excited to have you here with me today for kind of a chat from my bedroom here, from my master bedroom. I have a lot of changes going on in my life now and I wanted to share them with you and I thought, well, I'll just do various videos about the different things that are going to be going on in my life. And then I thought, oh, that would seem jumbled to you and confusing and you wouldn't know why I was getting this operation or that operation because this is a big medical year for me coming up and I wanted to share that with you to see if you all would have interest in going along with me on these medical procedures because as we get in our last half, our second half, <laughs> I keep thinking maybe it's my last third, but no, my second half, sometimes we do have medical issues come up and we need to take care of them. And in one of them, actually in both of them, I think I've got some really good advice that can help you if you have the same thing going on, some maybe new information that you haven't heard. But before I get into all the chat here, I did want to show you my outfit that I'm wearing today. It's very casual. It is a navy blue cable knit turtleneck sweater. I really like the sweater and it is from Amazon, so it is reasonable, but I especially like the jeggings because they are a knit. They look just like jeans, but they are the softest, most beautiful feel on your legs and they fit really well, and they're very reasonable in price. Really great, great leggings. And if you're not yet a subscriber to the 50 Plus Beauty family, I hope you'll click that little bell because that subscribes you and sends you email notifications of my future videos. Okay, let's get into this, and I'm just going to start a free flow of what is going on in my life because I realized that I haven't really done this in a couple of years, and so I kind of wanted to let you know what was going on and if you have big things coming up in 2023 for you, or if you have things you've gone through in the past that you would like to share, I would love to know that. We all have challenges and things going in our lives and joys, and that it is kind of fun to be able to share them with everyone here to get some support from the other members of the 50 Plus Beauty family. Okay, I don't even know where to start here. Okay, I guess I'll start with my work situation. And that is that, as I've said before, my sister and I have owned a company for about 25 years, going on 26 years now. It's an insurance-related company. We do employee benefits like flexible spending accounts. We have a national network of medical providers that we credential for insurance companies. We have chiropractors and also behavioral providers, psychologists, psychiatrists, social workers. We are not social workers, psychologists, psychiatrists, or chiropractors but we do credential them for insurance companies. And I am so happy that the business is still going strong after 25 years. And my son has actually come into the business about a year and a half ago. It was two Februarys ago. And he did that to learn my position so that I could back off a little bit. Although it is so much fun working with my son that I'm still working nearly every day, at least half days, if not more. Basically I'll work in the morning and then watch my emails in the afternoon. But my son, Dylan is his name. He is so fabulous at what he's doing. I think he's much better than, than I was, quite honestly. And so I'm happy to have him here. So basically, I guess you would say I'm semi-retired. And what I basically do is work in the morning in my company. And then in the afternoon, I do my YouTube and I really do like the videos. Now, for those of you who don't know, this is a big year for me because in April, April 22nd, I will be turning 65 years old and that means Medicare. Yay, Medicare, I'm excited. My husband went on it last year and it's kind of like, I feel like all those years we paid in to Medicare and Social Security, I'm excited to start getting some of that back. I don't plan to take Social Security until the latest, but Medicare is something you have to take. So I'm excited to get signed up for Medicare in April. But before that, I have two different medical procedures coming up that I'd like to share with you. And the first is a thyroid operation. I have had half of my thyroid has a couple of cysts and they're not cancerous. They've been watching them for maybe five, seven years, somewhere in there. But one side of my thyroid has become very enlarged. It's the left side. And I guess you can see it there. My OBGYN said, Beth, you can really see it. You need to go get that taken out. Well, I don't want to get my entire thyroid taken out because of the obvious reasons. I don't want to gain weight. The thyroid has a lot of hormones that really do, you know, help your body in many different ways. Not sure exactly what ways, but I hear that. But anyway, I think this is the bulge there, but I don't want to end up with a big goiter. And 
here is the main reason I am getting it done. And that is that I am having difficulty swallowing certain things. Like if I eat pork rinds, which I've been doing lately due to being on the carnivore diet, which is a whole different topic. I've been on the carnivore eating plan for 30 days now. And if you like to see a what I eat in a day on that, it has been great so far. My IBS is pretty much gone and I lost the extra five pounds that I had gotten. So I'm really happy with that. But basically when I eat certain things like pork rinds or a month ago when I used to eat peanut butter, there were times honestly that that side of my thyroid was so swollen against my esophagus that I felt like I was going to choke to death. And whenever I eat something like that, I have a water glass there thinking, oh my gosh, I, I hope this isn't going to do me in. I went to my OBGYN again this year, maybe about three months ago, and he sent me out to an endocrinologist because he said, Beth, it looks like it's just getting bigger. And then I went to the endocrinologist and he did a scan and he said, are you choking to death when you eat? And I'm like, gosh, I am. And I really didn't realize that that was a symptom of my enlarged thyroid. So here's what we're going to do. I don't want to make this long and involved, but I'm very excited about this procedure. I am going to Cleveland Clinic. In fact, this is New Year's Day, so it's Sunday. And Tuesday, I fly out to Cleveland Clinic. And Wednesday morning, I have a pre-op appointment with a Dr. Benson there. And he's very highly rated. And he does a very specialized procedure that you might be interested in. And that is that most thyroid surgeries, in fact, my sister had one, they either go in through this wrinkle or this wrinkle and you get a nice long scar on your neck. And for those of you who followed my channel, you know that I had a nice long scar here maybe three years ago because I had something removed there, but it was awful to go through and I just don't want another scar on my face. You know, I just don't want that. So he actually goes in through your armpit. So he will go in through my armpit and he will take just the enlarged half of the thyroid the doctor said you can get it all out and you should because we'll have to keep watching the other side, but I don't want it all out. I just want the big side out because I want to keep the hormones and everything produced by the other side. So anyway, the nurse said he's not very far out on surgeries and I should probably be able to get in for the surgery in Cleveland at Cleveland Clinic and I live in Wichita, Kansas, so I'll fly there. But she said she thought that I could get in on the surgery maybe sometime in January. So if you'd like to hear about that rather groundbreaking surgery, it's called robotic thyroidectomy, a robotic thyroidectomy. Let me know and I wish other women would, would learn about this because if you meet certain parameters, which apparently I do, then you can have your thyroid operated on with no scar on your neck at all. And let me know if you'd like to come with me on that operation because I will show you every step of the way on that. Now, I also have another operation coming up which I'm actually very excited about. And that is that I am having a hip replacement on my right hip. And I know you guys are looking at me and thinking, gosh, she's so young. Well, I'm not young. I'm 65 this year and I did look it up. And the average age for a hip replacement is only 67. And for those of you who followed my channel, you may remember that I explained that in my late forties, actually it was all through my forties for about 10, 10 years, I would say, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and they said it was a form called ankylosing spondylitis and that's where your spine eventually like, you know, you end up hunched over and you end up looking at the ground like a C when you're like 80 and 90, which didn't sound like fun at all. And so I started looking for alternative means to get rid of that rheumatoid arthritis. And for the first part of that, maybe five, six years, I was on all the rheumatoid arthritis drugs and basically you go from one anti-inflammatory that works for a while to a more serious one that works pretty well, but then you get all these side effects and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And there's really largely nothing they can do. So I have a video on my channel about all the little alternative things I use to try to get rid of my rheumatoid arthritis. And I ended up getting my breast implants removed and within six, eight months, I had no pain anywhere around my body at all, which was great but I had had the diagnosable RA for maybe seven or eight years. I get all muddled up on time there. But unfortunately, while I had the RA, it was damaging some of my joints. I had a knee replacement at the first of my channel about five years ago, and I took you all through that. So I'm going to take you through my hip replacement, which is March 1. I have my surgical pre-op February 1, but anyway, I'm especially excited about this one because number one, I'm going to one of the best joint replacement surgeons in this region. 
He did my knee replacement. His name is Dr. Papadimos, and he is wonderful. But number two, he goes in with a very limited short scar right on the front of your hip bone, and then he replaces out that joint, and apparently the healing time is really minimal, and you almost have to do no physical therapy at all. And so that hip replacement with the short incision scar is markedly better than the old hip replacement where they went in, I think, at the back of your hip, and it was a very long incision, and the healing time was very long. So again, if you'd like to hear about that surgery, then let me know because I would be glad to take you along and let you see not only the surgical process itself, but also the healing over the next, hopefully about three to four weeks is what I think. I may be crazy, but I am thinking the healing will go very quickly on that. Now, in addition to medical stuff, which I'm really excited to get through those, the first quarter of the year is just medical for me. I am also going on a couple of trips this year and again, let me know if you'd like to have some videos about that. I'd like to start doing some more blog style videos. So these trips might be good for me to do that. The first trip is actually in like a couple of weeks and my husband and I are taking my son Dylan and his wife Melanie to a landlording convention. It's called mrlandlord.com. And my husband and I have rental houses and we have been landlords and used the mrlandlord.com supportive website for a long time. And every year in January, they have a wonderful trip and you go there to some beachy location. This year is Jamaica, so we're going to Jamaica. I have never been there. And in the mornings, you take real estate type seminars and learn more about real estate and landlording. And then you have the afternoons and evenings just to lull in the sun and wear your sundress and go out and eat seafood and all of that. So I'm really excited about that trip. The reason I wanted to have my hip replacement in March is because later in the summer, my husband and I are going on a cruise. We are going to Greece, Turkey, and Italy. And we've only been on one cruise in our life. And it was a terrible, very inexpensive cruise. And it was a bad ship. And my husband said, I will never go on another cruise. So this is a big deal that I have kind of gotten him to go on the cruise with me. And this is a celebrity cruise on a very new ship. And apparently it's supposed to be just wonderful. And we're going on a class called Aqua Class. And in Aqua Class, they have a more health-related restaurant with apparently good food, but, but a lot more healthy food. And I can get my carnivore type foods there. And you have access to the fitness center and all that. So that should be lots of fun. So anyway, that is what I have coming up medically and in terms of fun travel for this year. And as I mentioned earlier, I just started the carnivore eating plan and so far so good. I really, really like it. And if you'd like to see some videos about that, I plan to do 60 more days. I've already done about 30 days but I plan to do 60 more days and then reevaluate. And I am studying a lot about this. It's extreme low carb is what it is. They call it zero carb, although I guess there's no such thing as zero carb. So let me know if you'd like to see some more videos about that. And in addition to the medical experiences and the travel that I'm going to be going through in 2023, personally, I'm also on kind of a happiness journey, I guess you would call it. I am trying to learn to be just a little bit happier on a daily basis. And I am really doing this in a systematized way. And one of the things I'm doing is I'm starting to study this book, 212, How to Transform Your Mind. And it is by Dr. Lance Parker. He's a psychologist in Wichita, a cognitive behavioral psychologist. And I've mentioned him before. He's quite wonderful. And in this book, he teaches you some cognitive behavioral ways to change your thoughts, to change your activities, to lead to more happiness on a daily basis. And I'm only on the second chapter so far, but I am highlighting things as I go and I am really studying this. And one of the things he said in the very first chapter really hit me. And that is that like when you want a better body, you don't expect to go and lift weights once at the Y and then you've got this perfect body. No, basically to get a better body, you have to lift weights or work out over maybe 60, 90 days and watch what you eat. And then all of a sudden you look up and you've got the better body or at least a much better body than you had when you started. And he basically says the same is true for happiness, that there are certain fundamentals you can learn that correct errors of thinking that have kept us from being maybe as happy as we could be, but that you just don't do them once and expect to be totally happy. You actually learn those fundamentals and use them every day and just keep practicing them. And practice makes perfect over time, but over maybe two, three months, you'll actually see positive changes in your life. 
And so I'm really excited to do this. And I normally leave you with a thought for the day, but I guess this is my thought for the day. And please respond in the comment section if you would like to learn a little more about this cognitive behavioral happiness journey that I am going on. Well, I have now been on YouTube about five and a half years and I would like to thank each of you lovely viewers out there who come and watch my videos and are a part of my channel. I consider you friends and I'm so grateful to have you in my life. Take care and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.